is meant for an adult audience. The Slup Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. Sexually oriented content. discretion is advised. Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Welcome to Love Line. And this is neither Adam Carolla nor Dr. Drew. This is Dr. Bruce. And unfortunately, Dr. Drew is in Toronto. And as you know, there's a blackout in Toronto. So I am filling in for Dr. Drew. And folks, this is a night I've been waiting for for a long time. This is a night when I am here and Adam Curl is late. And uh, if you know anything about my exploits filling in for Dr. Drew, I recently... Yeah! Oh, no! I'm getting... <laughs> I was just ready to go into my diatribe about you. <laughs> oh, you're late. Oh, I would have made it if not for that goddamn red arrow at the corner. <laughs> God damn it, I was there. I had it. I was honking. It was turning It was turning orange in the car. So I was like, on the horn. It's like, you pussy, go. There's and no now, excuse. Stop. You know how long I've waited for you to be late and me to be here without you here? Wait, what time is it? <laughs> I don't know. What are you talking about? Poor Drew. Oh, these goddamn red arrows in this godforsaken town. Just sitting there rotting at oh, the I red know. arrow. Just Traffic plan clear. Ahead. Oh. Plan ahead, Adam. But do you, do you understand while... I, and by the way, I know you're at the helm. And, I, and this, I'm in control. You being at the helm is like a, your retarded <laughs> five-year-old uh, piloting the space shuttle. It's a very frightening thought. Listen, I went through 30 seconds without stuttering it, until it, you opened the door. and then it, I was, it. it was four seconds. It felt like 30. <laughs> that was the thing. You understand that I'm sitting on Venice Boulevard, and I can see so far ahead of me, I'm seeing the Earth curve. Oh. You understand? I'm seeing oh, the horizon yeah. fall away, and not a set of headlights in front of me, but that red arrow. <laughs> that's red, and I'm just staring at the clock. When are we going to do something about these red arrows? I don't know. All that horsepower and nowhere to go. Oh. Right on, Adam. And let me say this. I've said it a thousand times. I'll say one more, and then we're going right into the show here. Right into the show. All we ever talk about is... Public transportation, mileage, oh, uh, diamond lanes. We got to open up another freeway. We got to do this. We got to get this town moving. Let me tell you how to get this town moving. Get people to shake their goddamn ass. I'll move this town 30% faster. You know what I want to treat? Here's what this town needs to be like it needs to be like a factory. We're not adding on. We're not adding equipment. We're not getting any more new employees. We're going to pick up productivity, mm -hmm. get people moving. No yeah. use having a big stack of cars waiting at the goddamn Red Arrow when there's nothing going on. Couldn't turn left. Couldn't be trusted to turn left. Can't do it. Did it on the last signal. <laughs> Go do it on the next signal. Can't do it on this one. This is a special, magical signal that no one can turn left on. You know, I'm just... Jesus Christ. I encourage everyone to drive through those things. I, I would have driven through them. I drive around cars that are stopped in front of me and go around them. Aren't That's you? how I will die, going through a red arrow. Everyone go through them. Adam, They're, calm yes. down. Aren't you concerned about Drew? You haven't mentioned anything about him. What about him? He's in Toronto. Where's, you're you're not Drew. Where's Drew? <laughs> He's in Toronto. <laughs> yeah. There's a blackout. Aren't you concerned? Aren't you going to say anything? What's he doing over there? He's he's, no, act he's 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 acting, please. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he's doing the Olsen twins movie over there. Right. He's playing their father. He's in Toronto. There's a blackout. He would have been on the air tonight, but uh, there is a blackout. So we called Doctor Bruce, and uh, God bless. I called uh, phone screener Brian when I was on the freeway at about four minutes to ten, and I said, uh, "Who's uh, do we get through tonight?" And he's like, "No," and I was like. Who's in the studio? And he's like, I don't know. Which was still better than Dr. Bruce at that point. But that, no, no, I kid, no. Bruce, great guy, great individual, great human being. All right, God bless you. 1 800 L O V E 191. Drew, Toronto, blackout. Still blacked out there? Yeah. They said till tomorrow morning for Toronto is the last I heard. Of course, that. Oh, really? Be, yes. We had, uh, we had one out here about a year ago. I was going to kill myself. Yeah. Like, I, I got home. I had to sit alone with my thoughts. Ah. Uh, I had to masturbate using only memory. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's like I, I went nuts. Like if I don't watch 15 hours of compressed TiVo, I when, when like I say TiVo. what I what I do is I take about 15 hours of programming on the TiVo and I mash it into about an hour and 55 minutes when I get home every night. If I don't if I don't get that, I go insane. Hmm. Thank God I had my wine. That's my only friend, you know. No, I went through the 65 and 77 blackouts. Oh, I'm really? From New York. Yeah. How long was that blacked out? Yeah. Uh, oh, actually, I didn't go through the 77. Yeah, no, but just, who cares but what happened in 65? You didn't have People anything. People were to, nice, no rioting. You didn't have anything to plug in. 
What were you missing? An eight track? My tape recorder. You didn't have anything. <laughs> yeah, you had a you had like a, a mandolin oh, and man. uh, and a pillow used to hump. You didn't have anything to plug it was in all back then. Baseball and WABC. All right, but the point is, is you TV signed off at midnight it back did then. Not. You didn't have anything to oh, watch. Dear. Now I got things. I got ceiling fans. I got uh, simulated vaginas. Oh, I don't want to know. I got everything that runs off electricity. Okay. <sighs> Calm down. All right, let's uh, <laughs> let's rock. <laughs> Samantha. Yeah. You're 14. Mm-hmm. What's up? Uh, not much. I have a question. All right. Go ahead. All right. You guys were talking about gynecologists like a few minutes ago. Yeah. Well, that was last night's show. At Dr. Bennett, and he's a uh, gynecologist. Oh, okay. Well, it was like on like tonight's radio and everything. Right. Right. <laughs> That's a day delay. Oh, okay. Well, I have a question. But, All right. Like, I heard from other people, like my friends that have gone to the gyno, they said that they have to see it, like, as soon as they start their period and stuff. Yeah. And that, I, yeah. I started my period, like, a couple years ago, and I've never been to the gyno. All right. Well, here's what Dr. Ben, the gynecologist, said last night, which I was a little bit surprised at, but it made sense, which is... Uh, you, you, uh, they've now rethought some of this. If you're, if and, you're not uh, sexually active. If you're not sexually nobody. active, you don't have to see the gynecologist just because you start your period. And as a matter of fact, you don't really have to see a gynecologist until you become sexually active, even if you're 23 years old. Okay. So, uh, Samantha? Yeah. You're fine. Okay. Unless you're, unless you're sexually active. Well, I'm a virgin, so. <laughs> Good, stay right. that way. All right. you get married. That's right. <laughs> get married at 15. <laughs> All right, baby doll. Keep that virginity. Oh, by the way, you have a kick-ass show. Thanks. Take care. <laughs> Thanks, you too. God bless. All right, looking good. Which show is she talking about? I'm not sure. Oh. Let's, uh, <laughs> couldn't be this one. Angela? Yes. You're 14? No, you're 22. What's up? <laughs> um, May of last year, I had an abortion. And I was in a relation, or I am in a relationship with this person, and I got really, I guess, my feelings towards him changed completely from loving him to basically just doing anything and everything to piss him off and get rid of him, and um, it didn't really work. I mean, he stayed by my side, and he put up with a lot of. Oh, and, oh hold on, <laughs> listen, Tardo, you can't drop the <laughs> s bomb. I gotta put her on hold. Let her adjust her attitude. Give her mouth an abortion. How long do we punish her? <laughs> I don't know. I usually say a couple of minutes and then I forget about them. Or I forget that I said I was gonna punish them and go back to them immediately. Either way it involves forgetting. I think she's ready. All right. She's ready? She's, she's right. Angela? Yes. Stop cussing. Yes. Okay, so anyway, you had the abortion. You got angry at your boyfriend. You tried to drive him away. It didn't work. He showered you with love. And now what? Um, basically, now I realize that, you know, he's a really good person and I want to be with him. And now he doesn't know what he wants. And mm -hmm. I'm kind of going through what I put him through. And I don't, I don't even know why I did it. Yeah. And well, I don't know what to, to do to, you know work right. through what he's going through. All right. Well, how long have you guys been together? Two years and a few weeks. Two years. And uh, you come from uh, chaos? What sort of chaos? Mm, your family. And you're growing up. Was it Any pretty problems? crazy? I'm sorry, what? Any problems growing up? Um, yeah. I mean, probably like most of the callers, uh, well, abusive and alcoholic father. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, that's why you drive them away. You can't. You can't handle the intimacy. You freak out. It's just a whole big yo-yo uh, cycle. Plus, throwing a, an abortion into the mix, you have a situation where the uh, you're not married. You you guys are living together, though, right? No. You're broken up. Not yeah. Well, you were living together though when that. Yeah. In after... in sin, as Bruce likes to call it. Yeah. No, actually, I wouldn't call it that. But you. You would look at going to a therapist if you're if you're wanting to get back together because when you have that kind of a stress in a relationship, there are a lot of questions that come up. Uh, having an abortion, you don't have the uh, the stress of dealing with the pregnancy, but there are many other issues and there's a lot of other baggage that goes along with that. So, 
uh, if it's something uh, that he's willing to go to therapy with you and uh, try and uh, try and uh, salvage the relationship, otherwise it's you know it is very chaotic, as Adam's saying, and it would sometimes point right, to no, this is never going to work, Angela. <laughs> Here's here's why it's doomed. You, you come from chaos. It, this, the second thing settled down, you're going to stir it up again. If you think he wants to be with you, you're going to push him away. If you think he doesn't want to be with you, you're going to chase after him, and the cycle will continue. So she continue. should move on. But what well, should she do before she moves on uh, so she he, doesn't repeat the same? Okay, here, here's, have you ever got any therapy for all the stuff you've been through, all the abuse and everything? No. All right, that's what you have to do. No okay. kids, no husbands. No boyfriends. Is you what gotta, Adam's saying makes sense? Therapy. Does it make sense to you? Are you following what he's saying? Yeah, I, I'm following what, he, what he's saying as far as the therapy and everything. It's just that I, I don't think that with how I feel that I'm, I, I want to go through this cycle and I, I don't want to do this anymore. It's I know, but you, you do and you have and you will. It's not a matter of what you do and don't want to do. You know, Chunky doesn't want to slam heroin. They just do. Yeah, all the things, by the way, that are bad that people do to themselves, they never really want to do. People really don't want to get strung out. They don't want to abuse other people that bad. They don't want to kill themselves. They don't want to do a lot of stuff, but they end up doing it anyway because it's powerful. But, Angela, it sounds like she has enough insight to realize there is, there's a problem that needs... All she needs is enough insight to recognize my insight. That's really all, it's all the insight you guys need. Just don't argue with me. All right, read a book. Start listening to some classical music. Read Drew's book. Read Drew's book when it comes out. When it comes out. Is it not out? I don't know. Hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> Listen, here's what everyone needs Next to do. Everyone, everyone thinks I'm a madman. Start listening to classical music and start exercising. Clear your brain out. Yeah, and how old were you when you started doing those things? 44. Yeah, okay, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some 20-year-old advice. <sighs> if somebody called and said they were doing that at 20, you would then no, you would here, be Okay, here, here's the problem. Everyone everyone who calls this show, listens to this show, or has heard of this show needs therapy. That, that's the unfortunate part. But these people are calling from a bum F, and they're 19, and they're working at a quickie mart, and they got nothing. And it's just not going to happen. Well, if you create the insight in that individual, I've, I've heard you do it through comedy yeah, and through yeah, but never, never genius no, analogies. We don't, we don't help anyone. Oh, okay. okay, what they can do, though, you know what it's like? Okay, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what our, what our listeners, I'll tell you what it's like. Here's another one of my genius analogies. It'd be nice. It, it's like they need physical rehab, and it'd be nice if they could go to a rehab center and work on state-of-the-art equipment, but they're in a drunk tank in Riverside. <laughs> And all they got is what they got in their drunk tank. So here's what I'm telling them. Do push-ups on the floor. Use the sprinkler bar to do some chin-ups and fill some uh, milk cartons with some water and do some, do some curls. We're making do. Telling them to go to the rehab center and have an uh, orthopedic physician is never going to work. Happen. Not going to happen. And when I, So when I tell them, get a Walkman, put some classical music on, and start uh, jogging around their block, that's that version of doing push-ups in the drunk tank. That'll help. Read a book. Go but, get a, there's many, many good books on the conditions you guys are all, all having and feeling now. Go get one and read it. How about church? Are we, are we going to have that discussion? Yeah, that's right. Put that Walkman on and go to church. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you relax. You catch some Zs. Bruce is right. Doors always open. <laughs> that's See what technology I missed out on when that's I was... That's right. Yeah, go to church. Okay. Find Jesus. There you go. All right, where are we? Who do you want to talk to? Uh, want line six? Sticker back. Oh, okay, you want line six? Yeah. Let's talk to James. James? Yes, sir. You're 17? Yes, sir. What's up? Um... Uh, well, I moved, I'm 17, and I'm still in school playing football, and I'm a senior. Uh -huh. And I just moved in with my girlfriend. Uh, we got a house together, and I was wanting to know if it's, if it's, like, normal or something, because we've known each other all our lives and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If what's if what you, you just yeah. did you sort of uh, fade out there? Hold on, hey, James. Oh, okay, sorry. Something about it. faded. Hold on. Okay. All right, all right. We got as long as you got. He's okay. putting. I was going to. I was going to oh. put a hundred bucks. He was going to work in if it at some point, <laughs> but he said if it really disappointed me. James. Yes, sir. 
Okay, so uh, you're playing uh, football. Yes, you're Living sir. with your girlfriend. Yes, sir. Is, uh, you guys have been living together for how long? About two months. About two months. But you've you? known her your whole life, you said. Yes, sir. And you we guys... We've grown up together. I see. You guys have your own house. Yes, sir. Wow. Hold you on. You have a military background? What's the sir? Oh, quiet. I'm going to close my eyes and picture what that house looks like. Uh-huh. <laughs> Corduroy sofa out on the uh, out on the porch, dog, possibly dead on it, waiting to die. Foil, I see foil up on the windows. No. Yeah, I see foil. I see some foil on the windows. James. Yes, sir. Any foil up on the windows? <laughs> no, sir. No, not even during the the uh, hot summer months. Sir. Re- reflect some of that radiant heat coming in. No. no? All right. All right, so how do you uh, support yourself? Uh, I get a check off my dad, and basically he died uh, about a year and a half ago. Hmm. What happened? He got in a car wreck. Hmm. Sorry to hear that. And uh, right. is some insurance gives you money? Basically, yes. You get enough to live off of? Yes, sir. How much do you get? How much do I get? Yeah. Uh, 552. 552. And your girlfriend works? Yes, sir. Oh. All right. What's rent on the house? 185 <laughs> Wow. That's a, a storage shed costs that much out here. That's <laughs> you I mean, you want, parking spots. You, want, you need a park? <laughs> oh, less than much more than that. Yeah, like I got buddies who live in New York, spend like four fifty oh, yeah. a month on their parking spot. <laughs> and they're walking there. The guy walks walks six blocks <laughs> to get his car, and he's like, hey, uh, could I have my car today? And the guy's like, blow me. I, you know I need three days at notice. <laughs> So James, yeah. 180 what? 185 yeah. bucks? It's probably a decent place. Are oh, you down by the coast? There, sure it's, oh, it's beautiful. Oh, he's in Alabama. Um, Where are you in Alabama? Lower Alabama, like what? near no uh, Holmes County and Dothan and mm. Mobile. Beautiful country, beautiful people. Yeah, know it well. So you're you're 17. You got an 18 year old girlfriend, uh, and, and the issue here is you change a lot. At age 17, age 18 for her, in the next five years, you're two completely different people. If you start having kids, oh, no, and, uh, listen, James, sir? James, what's what's birth control out there? About a nickel a month? <laughs> I wouldn't know. What, what's like a gallon of gas? Four cents, a loaf of bread, a penny? What what's what do things cost out there in it's Alabama? A Pepsi or a drink is like a dollar nine with tax. With tax, all right. Right. Pack of cigarettes, Marlboro Lights, five dollars or four dollars. Four dollars. <laughs> it's not a time a little warp. Pricey. Just... <laughs> yeah. All right. And uh okay. All right, so listen, James. Yes, uh, do not get her pregnant. That Why? is your uh, number one goal. It, and uh I can I can hear it in your voice. This is uh, not too far away for for you. You are you using birth control? Am I? Is she? No. Well, don't you think you might get her pregnant? No, well we want to. You you want to get pregnant? Yes, sir. You uh, but James, uh, is there one major reason you're calling? Like, does she beat you, or do you beat her? Or is yeah. there like it'd be some, funny if she beat you. Is there some well, something in the back of your mind that's that you want to tell us that no, may be a problem? It, it's been we've been together like five months. We'll be the seventeenth mm-hmm. of this month, right? Mm-hmm. And within them five months. Mm-hmm. To me, we've broke up. Well, we've broke up at least five times within the five months. But mm-hmm. for some reason, when I leave, get down the road, I got to come right back. I understand. That's 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 hillbilly love. And by the way, it's not uh, it's not it's not them. It's uh, them there. By the way, uh-huh. just for putting that into a sentence. Hey, uh, hey, James. Yes, sir. This is. <sighs> I, I know it just sounds like um, it's I, I I know you can't hear anything I say I mean you can audibly hear it but I, I don't know if you actually penetrates but but please listen when I say that you guys cannot have a kid that you guys may break up a hundred times in the next 20 minutes. And and the kid thing is not going to work, right? And that <laughs> it's never going to work, though. He's going to have five kids in the next eighteen months. But that's a classic. It'll pattern. never work. You, I, I, it's never going to work. No, it's you not going to work. You know he's going to have a kid. You know she's going to be well, pregnant. 
She will be pregnant by the time the summer's through. No, he's calling in. He's a, he has a sense. And she of will so- give birth to a cider jug. <laughs> Now this, he has a sense of something wrong. He has some. This is a guy with some insight. Yeah, yeah some and, insight. He's going to knock her up tonight. Listen, he should take his check, take twenty percent of the check every month, and see a therapist and find out uh, why he needs to come back. They don't allow therapists in Alabama. <laughs> one tried to enter. <laughs> one tried to enter the state in nineteen seventy one and was uh, was killed. They strung him up. Okay. They're uh, like, uh, we don't like you boys with your suede patches on your your elbow pants and sleeves there. What there? Look at him. He's got a beard. I think he may be a Jew. I think um, it wasn't the Mancho real popular in Alabama. In fact, you have a fan club there. I'd, I'd say that you shouldn't be so hard on these people. All right, James, don't get her pregnant. Please. Uh, please. Uh, I got Just another question. No, no, I don't care. Just don't go. Uh, James. Pregnant. Don't talk to James anymore. No, it's, it's not, not live there anyway, is it? All right. That's going to Beg him to see a therapist, but they don't have therapists. They do have now. therapists. He lives, He's got his some... rent is 185 bucks a, a month. For Christ's sake, he makes five. His, he gets like 525 bucks from his uh, dad's death fund. This is never going to work. Never beg him to see a therapist. Police, he's 17. You should use your powers as a pedagogue for some good, rather than just <sighs> your pedagogue. Means I like young dudes, right? <laughs> I think that's a different. Is that what that is? No, I think it's it's somebody that you whatever their guilty. Yeah, right. You're guilty. All right, we got to take a break. When we come back, we're going to speak to uh, Linnell, who uh, gave her boyfriend a BJ for the first time today. And uh, she's afraid of getting a disease. It's an yeah. Infectious disease education right. time. All right, oral gonorrhea. All right, Doctor Bruce, filling in quite nicely Thank for Doctor Drew, and no hair gel tonight either, but oh, still feeling it's out good. Out my car. Oh my god. Uh oh. But confident. Looking yeah, good. Thank you. We'll be back after this. Hey, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's uh, Dr. Bruce. Just talking to Dr. Bruce about uh, coming over. I don't know if you heard that or not. Oh. Our uh, engineer, uh, Michelle, ran out of the room to get me a uh, notepad and uh, seemed like uh, seemed about ready to go back on the air, but yeah. <laughs> that's all right. Whatever. Close enough. It's all right. For government work. It's Thursday night, everybody. That's like Friday night for you. Dr. Bruce is here. He's filling in for Dr. Drew. God bless him. Dr. Drew is in Toronto. He's filming a movie with the Olsen twins. He was uh, slated to come on tonight from wherever he was, and that big uh, East Coast power grid blowout thing uh, got him off. And uh, it's off in, uh, in it's off in, uh, I'm sorry, New York. It's off in um, Detroit, <clears throat> Detroit parts, of Tor- uh, parts of Canada. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, I was just complaining about uh, L.A. drivers. And let me tell you something else about uh, L.A. And, oh, oh, I just want to go insane. But here, here, here's the one thing I can say about L.A. versus New York. L.A. cab drivers are pussies. They're slower than the general traffic. They're confused, slow, effed up people. And in New York, they haul ass. And I love that about New York cab drivers. Now, they may be maniacs and they may be pricks, but they haul ass. And I have, I have uh, amazing respect for anyone who wants to haul ass. I'm actually, I'm always the guy who's behind the guy who tries a crazy, ballsy maneuver. I'm always, like, applauding. Yeah. Hey, wow, that was ballsy. That was a nice, they used the e-brake to tr- <laughs> help make the corner. That Sweet. That's, That's like nice. Death Race 2000 in Manhattan, though, for yes. cabbies. I, free, I don't care. I love that. L.A., you guys, I know none of you speak English, but if anyone ever tells you uh, can translate this, you're all pussies. You're horrible pussy drivers. They're, they're slower in hell. They just creep along. They don't seem to be aware of anything. Yeah. And they're, uh, I don't know what it is. I don't think it's a nationality thing because New York's got the same crazy nationality thing, but uh, they drive like maniacs. My cousin drove a cab for a year in New York working his way through school. And until you were picked he's up. He's Pakistani? <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely, yeah. No, he's Indian. No, he's, until you get picked up by a bus and moved physically in your cab, you really hadn't passed the uh, initiation. Really? Actually, yeah, so after he they did, ram yeah. you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, let's, uh, oh, yes. let's, talk. let's go to line one here. Greg? Yeah. You're 16? Yeah, what's up? What's up? Well, the other night, my girlfriend and I were screwing around in the pool. Mm-hmm. And I was, like, we're kind of worried that uh, something might have happened. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> like, we were... What were you doing? Well, we got out in the pool and we started making out, and mm-hmm. we started, like, screwing around, and she got me off. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. like... Your dad's in there the following morning, swimming laps. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> now so we were, like, relatively extremely close. 
And what? what does that mean? Like we're, uh, we're just kind of worried that something might have happened. Yeah, yeah. She she can't get pregnant by you releasing your your seed yeah. to the water like a salmon spawning. Yeah. Isn't right. that how fish? <laughs> isn't that how they fertilize fish yeah. eggs? Yeah. You did just uh, spray that milk everywhere. It's so. Yeah. Relatively extremely close versus extremely close versus relatively close. How do you you got to be in. How do you define? Yeah, you right. got to be inside. All you right. weren't in. She was just giving you a handy in the water, handy. Yeah. All right, that's fine. Seriously, right. is your, is your, your, it's it is the summer time. Is your dad using that pool? Your mom in there? Got a kid sister? Nah. No, that's your your personal pool. Yeah. No. Um. My mom doesn't really go swimming. My dad doesn't live with us, and my sister's like never home. Okay. All right. Well, it's your so own, uh, own personal jackpool. sperm bank. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be surprised if, uh, you know, four or five years from now, things start crawling from that. <laughs> That'll make a good horror movie. They, uh, huh? where are we? Let's talk to uh, Jeanette, who's, uh, or Janet. Janet? Hi. Hi, how are 25? you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. Good. Okay. I uh, work nights. And I came home, and I took a hot bath, and I was using the shower head to masturbate, and I started to, like, drift off to sleep, and I had a sexual fantasy about being with God. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was just like a glowing, like, just outline of a man, and it was really good, and I had a really great orgasm, but then I felt, mm -hmm. like, really horrible and guilty yeah, sure. and worried that... I don't know. And I'm not even really like a really religious person or anything. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you ever heard of that or if that's really wrong or weird or what's yeah. your take on it? Freud heard, would have a, a lot of people. That. God has given a lot of the uh, ladies anal, but uh, <laughs> not, not just the conventional stuff. That's, that's his thing, by the way. Uh, is he cut or is he, you know, is he circumcised or? You know, I just saw like the top half. Oh, like, you, didn't, you didn't? No. <clears throat> All right. Uh, yeah, well, here's the thing about you women. You're all over the place with these fantasies, you know. Every, every time you talk to a woman, they, you know, they go, oh, I had, a, I had the most sensual dreams. Like, yeah, who, who are you with? I couldn't make out his face. Like, really? I know exactly who I'm with. When I'm, that's the whole thing. Like, you got to know who you're. No guy's ever had a fantasy where it's like some chick with just a blank etch-a-sketch face. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Women, women have that. They have that crazy fantasy stuff. That sort of. It's it's such a mystery, man, that you don't even know who he is when he's humping you. <laughs> <laughs> but so, Jeanette, what uh, what religious persuasion do you emanate from? Um, I was raised Catholic, mm -hmm. but now I would guess I'd be Unitarian if I had to claim a so religion. You were raised Catholic. There were no abuse issues, and this didn't no, look like a priest when you had the dream. Or... Well, this yeah. is. Uh, this is definitely a hell offense. I mean, this can get you in. Oh, yeah. Do you feel any guilt over this? Or yes, I do. I feel I felt uh, really guilty and bad, and mm -hmm. it was tempting to have that fantasy again. But really? I was kind of like, oh, I better not. Well, then, how do you, you know, know? How do you know it was uh, the the uh, the maker? You I know just, what I mean? You know, in my head somewhere, it just clicked. It. Yeah, that was it. Mm-hmm. All right. I mean, yeah, that's all right. Let, let, look. Might like have immaculate conception or something like that. <laughs> yeah, you give birth to a water pick. Right. <laughs> <laughs> to a shot glass. Hey, but but look, when you when you close, were your eyes closed? I hope. Yeah, yeah. I was like kind of falling asleep. I was like, all right, but it's but not do, like I look, meant. All right, quiet down. When you close your eyes, oftentimes, especially right when you're going to bed, you do see like different. It's just sort of lights and and movement sometimes. You know what I mean? It's just not a flashback. Or could be, Lights could be. Movement. I'm closing my but, eyes now. See, well, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Right. I mean, you're, you're sort of yeah, more susceptible. Like you rub your eyes and you can get the right. same type of... You're more susceptible to that kind of stuff as you're sort of in that place in between consciousness and unconsciousness. You know, maybe the, oh. the, the, she was falling asleep. The, the uh, You're taking a... I mean, yeah. look at the archetypal significance of this call. I mean, right. someone um, fantasizing sex and thinking that it's God. So... Drew should only be here to interpret this very complex individual's call because it's beyond my abilities. Right, I mean, what, whatever. It, it's 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 naughty. It's she's 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 gone. Fast. She's gone to Unitarian away from her. Uh, parents yeah, well, Catholicism. there's the guilt issue. Yeah, and, all right. Uh, it's it's naughty and, and and God, the ultimate mystery, man. Yeah, Jeanette. Right. Yeah, you're fine. It's enjoy, okay. enjoy. <laughs> it's all fantasy anyway. All right, no. Thanks. 
I yeah. think it would. I think she yeah. should explore her her religious roots and and how. And when you talk about guilt and she was attracted you're, you're to you're it, it you're Unitarians like uh, that's a like Christianity for homos or what is that? <laughs> they take everyone, right? And I think God, you know, all is one, and God is in everything. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Okay. But Janet, coming. Yes. Yeah. Are you, you are you mad at your parents? Um, not particularly. No. But you don't. They're a little uptight for you. Uh, no, actually, quite opposite. They were really. Oh. Like well, my mom anyway was really free spirited and such, and I spent right. a lot of time with my grandparents who were really enforced the the Catholicism on me. All right, well, this right. is a little payback for, so there, for but it, Nana and Grandpa. There, there's something going on with the conflict between what feels good and what you want to do, and some of the legalistic issues maybe that were imposed upon you by grandparents or part of the family, and so, trying to resolve and work some of that out. Even being in the Unitarian Church, what's legalistic? Well. God is a bunch of rules rather than God yeah, is a see. loving God that would right that yeah. would want you to do things because yeah. of the relationship the rather vengeful. than you better do these things or you're going to be that's how you grow up, up right <laughs> the vengeful God no no the God no. that's the relationship God, God, God that loves you and you really? you do good things fruits of the spirit you Your do good told things you not to whack off though right. Yeah, God saw no you. absolutely not no yeah. my father was he was pretty much uh, yeah. you know pretty like agnostic that. all right. Good guy. Played a lot of baseball, worked in the fire department in I think New that's York. Okay. All right, good guy. Yeah. Went okay. to church. Oh, he did? Oh, Pretty supported the family going to church. for an agnostic. Mm -hmm. Eileen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My family was into no religion because that would have been being into something. <laughs> and, and any movement was forbidden in, in the Corollas. It was like they couldn't do anything. Like it's like they couldn't follow a baseball team. They couldn't be in a religion. They couldn't like cars. They couldn't, they couldn't do anything because anything was something. You see what I'm saying? It, it's they're so lazy and so effed up and so depressed <laughs> that they couldn't even be religious. They but, couldn't even move. But your father was searching. I mean, he seems like he's yeah, yeah. having done the show with them once. And yeah, 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 I'm not sure I want to be in the same room with you two yeah. again for an hour. Great guy, Eileen. Yeah. You're 18. Yes. What's up? Um, I'm kind of like in this like love mess, well, like love triangle, shall I mm -hmm. call it? I guess. Mm -hmm. And um. I'm with this guy. I've been with him for like three months, and well, we're engaged or whatever. And but lately, I've been talking to my. I have a baby. I have a two-year-old little boy. I've been talking to his father for sure. like the past three months. Also. Bakersfield, you're 18. He should be like uh, more like six or seven. Yeah. You're way behind, baby. All right, go, go ahead. ahead. And um, well, like me and my baby's dad, we've been talking and. Well, we've been, like, talking about getting back together, sure. and all, and I've told him about my recent boyfriend that I have. Mm -hmm. And, well, I guess I do want to leave the boyfriend that I have because, like, he's just lazy, and, you know, sure. I don't think he'd be prepared to support not only me but my son also. Well, uh, where uh, let me ask you this, uh, Eileen. Mm -hmm. Why, um, <clears throat> what makes you think the biological dad would be good for supporting your child when he split the first time well because he has a job and everything and yeah, well, where, where was he for the last two years well he left about a year ago he left to florida to go work over there how florida. old is he florida shocking and by the way when you live in bakersfield you don't have to go to, uh, to florida florida bakersfield is florida without the ocean that's all it is oh well i don't want to go over there he's going to come over here we're, he's he's coming back to Bakersfield. We want to get a place in Bakersfield. Yeah, it's beautiful. What's with your geographic prejudices here? But you've uh, never probably even been to Florida. Okay, let me let me say this. First, I've been to Florida many Alabama. times. Alabama. Secondly, here's 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 what I've realized. Florida has become the basically uh, the the bay the bay that the, we dump into for the entire country. Uh, every 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 deadbeat dad. Every tr every terrorist in training, every screwball, no count fugitive goes to Florida. It's Florida or Nevada. The human waste every, receptacle. You, listen, course. you turn on the TV, you hear some crazy story about her mom trying to eat her kid, or her mom uh, <laughs> making a uh, making. It's always hor horrible parenting stories out of Florida. We have a joke, by the way, it, which is uh, called Florida or Germany. Every screwy story that comes over the uh, over the wire, where somebody uh, tries to make a child seat for their kid by uh, duct taping a lawn chair to the roof. <laughs> For their SUV, and they caught their kid, killed their kid going over a low overpass or something. It's either Florida or Germany. Yeah. Every idiot ends up in Florida. Everyone. 
and then and then the rest end up in Nevada, and then they sprinkle some in Riverside and others in uh, Bakersfield. What's in Riverside? How about Vermont? What's Riverside in Riverside? Vermont? Nothing. Oh, I'm not in Riverside. Not a river. <laughs> Nothing. Mission. Where is that river? Ah, oh, that's a good question. How, what, how, you call yourself Riverside? Where's the river? Yeah. Crabside is what it should be called. All right. Okay. Eileen? Uh-huh. Okay, so here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't trust the old guy, but I don't trust the new guy either because I don't trust you to make uh, decisions. I was going to say, do you trust Eileen? No, I don't. So, first off, what are you using for protection? How do we know you're not going to have another kid? I'm not on birth control. Yeah, I know. Not having sexual relations. All but right. you are engaged to the present guy, though. Yeah. And why? Why no sex? Because I just don't want. I don't want another baby. I guess I just. Well, I that's don't want to have sex. And, I, and I, I know, but but no, that's ridiculous. Because this guy's going to get drunk and he's going to roll over on you while you're asleep, and you're <laughs> we're going to have another baby, not you, us. Oh. All right. So listen, you get on birth control. Would you screw ball? Hmm? Please, like an adult, and no more kids. <clears throat> I know. You can, you can look. You're not in love with the guy you're with now, so break up with him. Yeah. Wait a second. Let let the new let the biological right. dad attempt to be the father of your child. Okay. 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 okay I, but I don't trust him either. No. It it sounds like there's a lot of information left out here, but it's always best if the biologic dad and mom can raise the well. It's quiet today. It's so nice when a biological father can raise so his unusual, own child. Yeah. yeah. So, but is is he is he abusive? Does he have a substance abuse problem? Eileen. No, he don't. And no, maybe he's a responsible. He did have a drug problem before. Shocking. Those Shocking. are one of the reasons I uh, left him, and um, he decided oh. to All right. like quit everything. So. What are you like, doing? Yeah. What yeah. are you doing to support yourself? To support myself, like financially. Yeah. No, I mean uh, weight bearing. Uh, what size of the choice in your part? Yeah, financially. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Like you have a job. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm planning on going to the reserves. The reserves. All right. Yeah. Who's? How are you paying for your rent and that kind of stuff? I'm living with my mom. Oh, okay. Yeah. Look, the most important thing is you got to be there for that kid. Yeah. And that's what people don't think about when they have sex they you know it's done it's done to have kids and you have a kid and then you don't take that into account so if you can get back with this guy if but people with a substance abuse problem it's not oh he's yeah, over no. he quit is he, he done something is bad. yeah well he's, he went to florida well she's in a relationship now All where right. she could possibly start off with I, another guy so uh, it's I, I mean i i know i sound it sounds like horrible and defeatist and whatever i'm sure her dad's way down the road she's living with her mom right now maybe it was she's abusive, trying so we don't want to communi- we don't want to communicate hopelessness to okay she, okay here's what i'd like to communicate i'd like to com- okay. c- communicate you not getting pregnant for a long time i'd like to communicate you t- Putting your child first. Take care of that child. Number three, if you can get the biological dad back in the picture, and he's sober, and he works, and he treats you well, and he treats his child well, then he can be in the picture. If he doesn't, he's got to go again. How about Eileen's got some real complex issues going on, and before she commits to any relationship, she has somebody that's a family therapist or something, (laughs) help her sort stuff out. Family therapist. Social services can help her out. She's in Bakersfield, California. Why do you think we have a deficit in Bakersfield? Yes, they do. Why why is there such a state deficit? Let me tell you what the the, uh, family therapist in Bakersfield is. a crow. (laughs) It just lands on your fence. And it's... People just stand under it with their eyes open like saucers. They just stare at it. And they go, what do you think he said? I think he said to stop blaming our parents. And then it just flies away the next year. That's their therapy over there. I think that's the, the crow the therapy. Crow in the as cradle. The crow th- Wasn't as that the, a song? Yes, yeah. it's as the crow flies therapy in no, Bakersfield. No. And, Social- and it's like, where's the crow going now? He's going to Riverside to spread <laughs> <laughs> to spread the news, and then it's a long journey to Florida. How about Redlands? That's wrong. And then we make fun of that. It's not he red. He don't even stop in Redlands. <laughs> he just craps as he's flying to Florida. Eileen is. Calling and no, ex- she's uh, exhibiting. No some- more kids. Find Jesus Christ. <laughs> Only take this guy back if he's good. He can't. He can't be on drugs. Okay. All right. We'll be. We'll be back. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Doctor Bruce filling in for Doctor Drew, who is in Toronto, who is experiencing a blackout. Not Dr. an alcoholic blackout. No. No. 
Dr. Bruce says, uh, <laughs> pour himself a cup of coffee. And he, uh, he, likes, uh, he likes his coffee like he likes his women. White. Put, yeah, uh, how many, how many cream packets did you put in there? Only four. Four, uh, four of those uh, little cup kind of, uh, give me that pen, by the way. Mm. Give me that. Stirring, stirring his coffee with a pen like yeah, an animal. Stirring your coffee with a pen. Well, after it washed off in your coffee, yeah. He, now, how many, how many sugar? And by the way, oh, okay. I, I kid you not. Doctor Bruce puts in ten packets of sugar into his coffee cup, and I ain't talking about a big tumbler of coffee. I'm talking about six, eight ounces, small paper cup. Takes five at a time, rips them off. Five at a time. And by the way, that is a strong man feat. Mm. That is like tearing a phone book in half, mm. tearing tearing all this. You, 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 you got good hand strength So Ray broke my hand. Tears them all off, dumps them all in simultaneously. Ten. How many sugars do you have in there? Well, it's, how many? it's a complicated process. <laughs> I many? have three sweet and low and two sugars. So no. Sweet, I, one saw sweet you open, I, I saw you open five sugars. I, well, you know, I'm just being honest. I'll put ten sugars, but I'll, if it's sweet and low, I'll put only five or six. So, I have seen him use four sweet and low in a uh, seven ounce cup of coffee too. And I keep telling him it's bitter after a certain point. Listen, I'm telling not, you, it's not crack cocaine that I, I'm not using your stash here. Who cares? There's plenty of cane sugar. What's the problem? It tastes good. I, you, know, you, don't, you you take. You take half a sweet and low and put it in six ounces of coffee, it's borderline bitter. I can't imagine putting four of them in there. What happened? Someone took like a soldering iron to the inside of your mouth? Do you have control issues or what? You know, it's like leave me alone. You mock like, me with your no, sweet No, I will tell you. That. Let me just let me just have the last word. Do you drink uh, do you drink uh, soda? You drink you know, No. You, how many teaspoons of sugar do you think there are in, in a Coke or Pepsi? 13 more. Really? Yeah, it's like Three times as much as the sugar I <laughs> put in my coffee. So. All right. Yeah, but look, you that's 12 ounces. you got six ounces. You have half of that. So it's like, for you, it's like 20 teaspoons of sugar. How many How many in a Coke? I never drink. I never drink Coke. Uh, I don't know. It's 26 grams of uh, carbohydrate and it's all sugar, all refined sugar. So right. I'm, I'm in good shape. Somebody told me uh, soda is really the worst thing you could drink. Yeah. All right. Mike? Which yeah. is calcium on your bones. Yeah. You're 16? Yep. What's up? Um... I would like to know if there's a way that you can have diabetes without knowing it. Uh, yeah. I think everyone who has diabetes that hasn't been diagnosed with diabetes probably has diabetes without knowing it. Uh -huh. Right, Bruce? Yeah, diabetes is one of those diseases that uh, doesn't manifest itself very obviously. I mean, you basically, uh, you're thirsty, you're losing weight. Uh, you're peeing a lot. Those are the common things that happen to somebody who's not known they have diabetes, and uh, it's picked up. It's Why? You think that's you? 16-year-old guys don't usually have diabetes. No, but type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is adult onset. It's usually somebody that's overweight, and they get it uh, in later uh, later ages. What do you but got? in youth, yeah. Di yeah. type 1 diabetics, uh, that, that is something that can oh, show what, up. What would be age. the symptoms Symptoms for Mike? He's got to pee, well, losing weight. Mm -hmm. You're thirsty all the time. All of a sudden, you're thirsty all the time. You're losing weight. Mike, peeing you know, all the time. You have any of that? Um, I'm thirsty a lot. I drink a whole lot of Coke. Like whenever we have it, I would drink like maybe a 12 pack every two days or so. Now, now we're talking about something where all of a sudden it's a change from what's usual for you, and then all but, of a sudden, yeah, you can't you can't drink enough. And Coke wouldn't really really do it. You'd be drinking water like crazy. Yeah, and you'd be peeing like a You would get more source. dehydrated. Oh, right. Exactly. Coke, That's right? what happens. You go into the, you end up in the emergency room and you're in a coma. And uh, I, I never can understand why drinking a liquid, why drinking tea or something with caffeine. Is it just something with caffeine that'll dehydrate you? Or beer, alcohol, anything that's a diuretic, anything that makes you pee more than you take than in. the liquid you're getting in. So caffeine and uh, alcohol are the are the worst culprits. So, That's why drinking beer to rehydrate yourself is yeah. even... <laughs> but there's still nothing better on a hot day or a lukewarm day or just a cold, like a cold day or a regular day or just a day, you know, when you're alive. Right, no, nothing right, better right. than that beer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sweet so, suds going down. Brittany? Yeah? You're 16? Yeah. You uh, think you see the guy who raped you, but he's in jail? Um, huh? What? You got yeah, raped? Um, about like last year, 
I went through this huge thing. This guy that I was seeing, he, um, apparently he was a registered sex offender, and me being the stupid person believed the story that he told me. And he told me that something had happened with him and an ex-girlfriend, and the father reported it in his rape, and mm -hmm. so he became a sex offender. It didn't turn out to be that, and he raped me. And I got into this huge thing of just, like, major depression and trying to, like, hurt myself and pulling myself away from my friends. And I got over it. He's in jail now. But I guess I've just been seeing his face. I've been mistaking other people that I don't even know for him. All right. Well, really hold on, because we we got to take a break. How old is he? Um, It turned out he was... 19. Okay. Hold on a second there, yeah, This is a good call. Yeah. I mean, not, not good for you, but... Not good for you, but... Good yeah. for the listeners. We can help you. Yeah. We're going to help. Cool. All right. So, uh, Brittany needs to hang on. Dr. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew. Quite nicely, too, I might Thank add. You. Having a good night, buddy. Feeling good. We'll be uh, right back with Brittany after this. Bloodline, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew and doing it nicely. Thank you. I'm going to taste this coffee. Just, oh, yeah. it's gone. <laughs> hey, you got to drink that stuff fast. It, it solidifies in the cup if you don't. Hey, it will congeal because once <laughs> once the, uh, once the all that sweet and low and all that sugar absorbs all the cream that you dumped in there, it'll just turn into bread pudding, Ooh. essentially. You're ruining my All right, well, now it just congeals in your in lower stomach. intestine. Fine. All right. All right. Where are we going here? Uh, going to uh, Brittany. That's right. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew in Toronto. Blacked out. Blacked out. Brittany? Yeah. Okay. So, you're 16. Yep. You got raped how long ago? Just last year. Just last year? Yeah. How old, is that, how old was that guy? 19. Just, okay, but... Okay. okay. Just last year... Just Is that a year ago, or...? Because last year is like eight months ago now, or nine months ago. Well, yeah, it was about um, 10, 11 months ago. All right. And, um, really okay. Check time. <laughs> and you got hooked up with a guy, and the guy was uh, was registered as a sex offender. Yeah. How did you find out he was registered as a sex offender? Um, my mom found out for me. She was looking it up on computers and stuff. She's hooked into something on the Internet. That's got to be nice. That's it's got like mom. I appreciate the tip on the registered sex offender, but you know what? That was all just a clerical mistake. So uh, then you hear him honking the horn in the El Camino in front. Okay, mom, don't wait up. <laughs> that had to be great. So he was her. 19 and you were 15 when this happened. Um, yeah, almost 16. Now, how could he lie about? Did you say he lied about his age? Mm, he lied about his age. He told me he was 18. And he also lied about the fact that he was a sex offender. He told me that it was false charges, basically. Like, mm -hmm, he screwed right. up and he got nailed for it anyway. Sure. And where's your dad? Oh, yeah. my dad lives Florida. In, no, Florida. Florida. No, Florida. Riverside. He lives in Redmond, actually. Oh. <laughs> Bruce will uh, say hi to him on his way home. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, All right. Uh, well, that's, what a coincidence. Uh, Florida West, Redlands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you haven't seen him in a while? Um, uh, I talked oh, to him boy. the other day, but I haven't really seen him in about four months. We your your dad? An argument, yeah. Yeah, is uh, we ever sexually abused? No. No. Why was your mom on, on the website looking up the uh, sexual offenders? <laughs> Had she ever been abused? Is there any? Is this something oh, in yeah, your family about this? Huh? She was when she was younger. She, she ran away she a was. lot because of it. Yeah. Okay. So she was sexually abused. She married your father. He didn't turn out to be sexually abusive. No, he didn't. That's uh, something that's surprising. Yeah, that is. <laughs> but, Either that, or he was very codependent, one extreme or the other. But it, <laughs> but he ended up abandoning the family and moving to Redlands, right? Well, he didn't really abandon us. They had an argument or something, and he they got divorced. And he still saw us for a, a lot, but. Okay. And I got into an argument, and I just really haven't talked to him. Okay, so now this guy raped you, and you called the cops? Yeah, my mom did. Oh, because your mom, yeah, your mom's... I was in denial, and I finally came out with it with mom, and Okay, did. how long after it happened? A month or two afterwards. Okay, and so how much time is this guy doing? 
Um, I don't know. Last I heard, it was four years, but I don't really know. How I come really... you don't get? You know, how come no more than four years? You're already a registered sex oh, offender, yeah. and then you rape. Uh, not only rape, but statutory rape. Uh, you get four years, like thirty years. You sure it's only four? Second Brittany? offense. Well, that's what I heard. I'm not sure. I haven't really. So you didn't have to testify. Mm-mm. No, I did go up there and talk to the judge, but I wasn't in the right state of mind. And okay, yeah. So does this guy? Okay, so have you gotten some therapy? Yeah, I go see a counselor, but. Well, the statement you made earlier, you said, well, I'm okay, but I'm seeing this guy's face, and you're having these recurrent things. When, it, when an incident like this occurs, post-traumatic stress disorder is having a traumatic incident, something that's out of the usual uh, things you experience in daily life, something traumatic, and not getting therapy. For, in the first 24 hours, you have all kinds of real complex biologic things going on. You have outpouring you know, cortisone, steroids, and adrenaline, and they found that there's actual changes that occur in your brain that are partially prevented by getting uh, therapy and you know, being able to uh, uh, express all these feelings you have and, and work through it in the very early in the first 24 to 48 hours. So if you don't get that, then you tend to have these later stage uh, symptoms where they're either dreams or recurrent, you know, uh, seeing the person or thinking you're seeing them, anxiety, All depression. Right, so, so, so you, you she needs to continue with the therapist. Yeah. Somebody that has a realization of what PTSD is all, all right. about because it sounds like you have some something that's more than just related to getting therapy because, uh, you know, you had an assault. And listen, uh, moms, if uh, you were sexually abused or raped and you give birth to a daughter, you might as well just uh, rape her at the hospital before you take her home. Get it out of the way. Just just get it out of the way because that's what ends up happening. You might have an awareness of that you can hand down things you, you didn't realize just because of what you've been no, through. Look, look at her mom. Sexually abused, on the lookout for sexual abusers, gets on the Internet, probably head on a swivel. Like right, a middle but, linebacker, and still her daughter finds an abuser. But it's a lack of the mom's ability to set appropriate boundaries and structure. Because while I, I, I think it's one thing to be on the internet looking to see if he's a sexual abuser, but she, the kid shouldn't be going out with this guy in the first place. So that nah, was a misunderstanding. <clears throat> the clerical errors happen. You well, know what I'm saying? That's just a man putting a label on him. You know what I mean? A 15 year old with an 18 year old is abuse. Yeah, by definition. Yeah. So what's I mean the fact looking to see if the guy is a, a sexual predator. He's a predator just because yes. he. he but listen, be. if you're if you were sexually abused like the mom was, your kid will be sexually well, abused. That's, that's but the it. point is, no matter how much you look, it's just right. gonna happen. So two things: people listening right I'm now. I'm saying can, get it over with in a safe environment. And I'm saying that if somebody's listening now and they're in that situation, they can get help. There is help you can get, and you can develop insight and develop an awareness of how inappropriate it is to be calling about a guy being a sex offender when just what he's doing is right is predatory all right speaking of uh, sex offenders john john you're 25 yep you like women's feet yep you're obsessed with women's feet obsessed okay well let me ask you a couple of questions just to find out the depth of your dementia if a woman had very nice feet but wasn't very attractive. Maybe maybe a five. You know, maybe a five or six. The feet being a five or six? Shut up. Woman had very nice feet. Ah. Would you start listening? Woman had beautiful feet, but she wasn't very attractive. Well, but not not hideous. Let's just call her five. Five and a half. And then there was another woman that was very beautiful. She was a nine, but her feet were very unattractive. Who would you go yeah. for? Well, it'd have to be the one's feet. Really? It's it nice. Man, the world is your oyster. That's like that's better than liking <laughs> fat chicks. You get whatever you want. You know, you just go to the beach, uh, find some homely chick with nice it, nice cuticles and pow. <laughs> doesn't work her. that way, isn't that a sad commentary? So really? are you running into any problems with it? Is it progressing? Is it uh, getting to the stage where it's it's, it's uh it, 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 it's an absolute obsession. Mhm. I mean, I just I it's <laughs> And when did it? When do you remember it starting? As early as I can remember. Do you? Do you? Uh, it, was, it was when I was young. Yeah, looking at Mama's feet. Do you? Uh, you yeah. Babysitter. You masturbate to feet. Yeah. And what are the feet doing? Just looking, looking, looking at. Just it. looking at the feet. No one's oh, humping yeah. the feet. It's not going. No toe in someone's ass or anything. Well, sometimes. 
Yeah. Okay. So were you exposed to any kind of sexual content that you shouldn't have been when you were real young? And I, I, it was there was a a babysitter that used to used to do things that I think is when it started. Really. Yeah. I'm just, right. you know, I'm, Mother was a stripper. Father worked at a Foot Locker. <laughs> I've seen it a thousand times. Well, All right, so what did the ba- what did the babysitter do? Um, it was just when we were kids. She would, uh, you know, I was, I would have to. That was my job. <laughs> was was to do things with her. And how at what? How old were you? I was probably six. Yeah. So mm-hmm. with well, that kind of a with. Well, well, that kind of a trauma. Do things. So well, he's, he's doesn't sound like he's un- he's uncomfortable. He's a little uncomfortable. Would, would you perform oral sex on her? What's that now? You uh, would you perform oral sex on her? No, I wouldn't. She would. I she would make me uh, lick her feet. Was that, that's really? kind of where it, that's kind of where it all started. My my brother would have to. He was the the oral man when we were when we were kids. But I think that's where it started. But my question is, right, how many how many <laughs> Something sounds wrong with this call. It could be, but it's in, it could be instructive anyway. I mean, it, these kind of things happen, and people with fetishes. I mean, that's in your DSM, you know, all the diagnostic manuals you know, for you psychiatry. Wonder, you wonder people if the parents have... were tipping her too, and they're leaving. Like, <laughs> Nancy, you did such a wonderful job. Thank you. Did the dishes. God bless you. Here's four dollars <laughs> extra. You keep that money for yourself, right? Well, the... Meanwhile, the nine-year-old's licking her feet, and everyone's going down on her. <laughs> it's not funny. I mean, when you think about a no, six-year-old experiencing this stuff. No. And I was watching it's this. Not ha-ha it was that John Wall show today I was watching? And they had a guy on there that was an upskirter. This is the first time I heard this. Guy's taking ca- pictures up women's skirts yeah. and then a constitutional what are you, what are you, lawyer. What are you sitting home all day? I had the kids today. All right. I was watching SpongeBob, but then, you know, I saw. When you say I like kids, that John Wall. Kids, you mean your balls, my, right? No, my three- and seven-year-old. All right. They love SpongeBob. All right. All right. Well, hold on. Anyway, so. I, I, I can get the guy to do the voice for you, when uh, no, Tom Kenny. No. Hey, John. Yeah. All right. So, John sounds serious about this. John it sounds, sounds like serious. he knows yeah, he has. It seems to... bogus. But listen, <laughs> if you got something bogus to say, please spit it out. Okay. My my question is, how many guys out there have a, you know foot fetishes? But just, I mean, what, what do you think the number is? I mean, is it like low? Is it high? Because I mean, I've only met like two other people. Okay. What's life, the point? I mean, that's it. it doesn't it doesn't right. matter. Uh, You've got no, a problem. No, he just, wants just, to know. I mean, and then how many, how many girls? I mean, because a lot of girls, they don't even know. I mean, I okay. can walk by and look at it. And, okay, listen, you know, there's it, a... It, I'm it's, sh- it's like for some guys, you know, walking around, and, and some guys like boobs. I mean... It, I mean yeah. No, 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 no. Now that, what do That's you know? different. Hell totally yes. different story. Look, there's probably 50 to 100 websites for guys that have foot fetishes. Bruce has perused them all. <laughs> no, I, I've avoided them all. And there are also probably people that meet and and will convince you that it's normal and it's healthy and and there's nothing wrong with it it's a disorder it's progressive it's you know it's a uh, it's a problem that you need to All deal right, well, what with what do you do see. what do you do i mean what do you do when something like this gets burned into your psyche at a young age it's you go to a therapist you have to go through therapy you have to work through it with a therapist it's not something that you some things you can have an awareness of and it can help to change the behavior and the problem but something like this is too it, just like you said, it's burned in right. at an age where you really shouldn't have a, se- a certain level of sexual awareness or arousal. Right. There's that arousal that occurs. It gets tied into the feet, and then that becomes a necessary part mm-hmm. of arousal. And nothing to do, and then the whole issue of intimacy and relationship, yeah. you sort of bypass that whole thing, and it becomes sexual arousal, it becomes the feet thing. Right. And so it's a complicated issue, and it it uh, sabotages relationships, obviously. Right. Because a guy like this is going to be get to the point where he doesn't care about the other, who, whose feet they are. Then. No. Could be his moms, could be the devils. Well, and no relationship, uh, no stable mom. relationship can occur. So has he gone to a third? Oh, has who he, cares? Look, here's the if whole it's thing. not a bogus call, then he has very l- little insight. Because... Uh, okay, he, he does have very little insight, and this misery loves company is no excuse. <laughs> and here's the thing: I know you love feet. It's going to be hard to cleanse your mind of those feet, but you got to see a doctor, but possibly Doctor Scholes. Yeah, <laughs> gelling, yeah. yeah. No, you got. <laughs> there's no telling. No, you got to <laughs> <laughs> shut up. Don't <laughs> laugh at this man. I'm not. You got. Uh, is there a book he can read? He's not going to go to Doctor Drew's new book. Doctor Drew's. I can't remember. Book. Name. But listen, no, I have a, ser- a serious point. 
Is he on the line? I, he can hear you. Okay. I I don't want to get into how many people there are like this because the next thing is, well, if there's that many people, then... Yeah, there's a mis- lot. No, like I said, Misery okay, Loves Company. Let, let me just say this. There's there's a lot of people this way. There's a, a lot of people who are on welfare. There's a lot of uh, Shiite Muslim suicide terrorists. There's a lot of uh, racists. There's a lot of uh, people that abuse their kids. There's a lot of alcoholics. There's a lot of everybody yeah, that you yeah. don't want to be. This is that an doesn't, AA. Doesn't you don't want to go to foot fetish support right now. No, I'm just saying there's a lot of everybody. Yeah. Doesn't mean you got to be one of them. No, but in this day and age, if there's enough of any kind of perversion or anything else and you get enough support, then it becomes something else you can't criticize. And, right. and you have a right to you oh, have a right to be a, a child pornographer because sure. you find enough people that are into that. Right. First Amendment rights. Yeah. Aaron? Hi. You're 15? Your boyfriend moved to Alaska. Yeah. Folks are making it hard to stay together. Yeah. You live in Canoga Park. Yes. Same place, pretty much. You close your eyes. You're in Alaska. <laughs> what was it, about 111 today over there? Uh, I don't know. I went to summer school. It was like I stayed for first period and like second period. We weren't going to do anything, so I was just like, whatever. I'm going to go home, and I've been home since. And I just like all I think about is like my boyfriend. I'm just like. Like, because we used to, like, live together, like, at my dad's house. Yeah. Like, oh, no. I used to live in North Hollywood. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, no, no, you should never have said that. Oh, man. You can ask her what street and then come up with a story about how you used to drive your car. Uh... Yeah, what street did you live on? I, live on I, I used to live on Cartwright. I lived behind a porn shop. Yeah. Oh, Adam knows exactly where that is. <laughs> Over in Lancashire there? Um, near Lancashire. It was a Big Apple book store yeah. for adults. Sure. You've never been in there, have you? No. It's funny. It's a, they call them adult bookstores. I was stores. asking Adam if he's been in there. Yeah, I've probably been in there. But look, they call them a bol- uh, adult yeah, right. bookstores. There's not, there's not one book in there. It's just magazines. <laughs> I spank to. But, and listen, what you, can, you can't tell me how hot it was in Canoga Park today just to torture me a little bit. Uh, I'll go with 111. Yeah. yeah. Brutal. It was actually Brutal. really hot. Like, I'd go on my balcony. I'm just like, oh, my goodness. Like, I yeah. just, like it was like humid like you'd go out there and like yeah. in five seconds you'd be like drenched from head to toe let me uh let me uh make this observation about going out on the balcony that means either you have a really great house or you live in a crappy apartment but if crappy it's a great apartment. house in that area they're making pornos down in the neighbor's right Shush. no, no i live in a true. crappy apartment yeah i was playing that since you moved from north Hollywood. <laughs> yeah yeah all right now listen your boyfriend who used to live with you yeah well, like, yeah. Um, okay. Well, the point is, is he's in Alaska, right? Yeah. That's it. It's over. Relationship done. You're 15, right? Yeah. How old is he? He just turned 17 in July. Okay. Why was he living with you? Your parents allowed him to live. Well, no, like, in I was this... like, I'm, I was living with my dad. He's like this big, like, dope fiend and drinks nothing but wine, and he's like this abusive father who would like, like, like yell at me and like beat me or whatever when I was home. He was a North Hollywood citizen of the year. Uh, 80, yeah. Parents of the 80, 87 through 94, by the way. Yeah. And they don't have a big they don't have a big crop to choose from over there. They had to go. But, but the like, guy did the least beating and the least drinking. Uh, like, yeah. We All knew right. that he was moving. And mm-hmm. so, like, we're like, well, you know, you can stay with me. Like, because he was running away so he wouldn't have to move. He was like, he's the oldest of seven children. Oh. And they're Mormon. And the reason. Oh. And that I'm just like. And I used to, like, go to church with him just to make his parents happy and stuff. And I was just like, whatever would make the relationship work with the family because the family's like, really strict. And, okay. You know. Aaron, let me, let me uh, chime in because, as you know, I'm a genius. Okay. And from North Hollywood. So here's the thing. Y- your dad's uh, a troublemaker. He's I don't like gr- him anymore. Good. Good. He's not a good guy. Screw him. Don't have a bunch of issues over guys just because your dad's an a-hole. I think you might anyway. But you're smart. You're sharp. You're 15. You're wise beyond your years. This guy is in Alaska. That is uh, farther than Drew in Canada. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. It's like uh, it goes United States, a whole country, and then Alaska. Yeah. It, it, it's too far. You'll never get there. Even if you uh, had a seaplane, you couldn't get there. You Forget about it. You're going to ruin your life. Here's what you need to do. You need to focus on doing well in school, meeting guys, not getting pregnant, and going far away from your a-hole dad and screwball family to college. All right? Okay. All right. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that's it. It's a, Look, all of you that are having these long-distance relationships when you're 15, forget about it. Yeah, but the, the behavior is 
the patterns are already laid down in her brain, just as as you were talking about the the foot fetish guy. Yeah. The, anyway, you're not listening. So. No. Nah. <laughs> Who's talking? True. Oh, it's Bruce. Doesn't matter. No, I'm listening, but you know, it's with one, I got I got one ear for you. Well, you I tell her to stay away the, from the yeah. from the screw up dad. Right. Alaska's a continent away. Right. Move on, but. That's she's right. got a lot more issues. She's probably was has been sexually active already. That pattern once established, she's going to go oh, out just because she was living with a fur no, trapper a for a while. <laughs> of course, no, she's, she's a sexually victim. active. Okay, and she needs to do more. It's way beyond her ability to understand that she's got the victim written on her forehead, and that you know. So she's going to trade in the the Alaskan uh, fur trapper, seventeen year old, for a. Uh, for another Canoga Park. Yeah, okay, uh, I know. It, it, it's, it's all bad. It's, 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 it's all bad. Shop. Just just look. Just find Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hey, uh, I don't know. Listen to classical music and do some exercise. All right? Let me tell you something. I went upstairs into my house. I got the uh, digital thermostat up there. Went up there about 7.30 in the oh. evening, take a nap. 91 is what it read. 90 goddamn one. Can this you is, believe that? Well, you don't have the thermostat set for... Uh, I'd have the thing blowing all day long. I just go up there and kick it on. And that's a know, lot cooler a where you are than Canoga Park. Yeah, not that much, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. But ninety-one? I didn't know it could get ninety-one indoors. Uh, I was like uh, some uh, illegal that was uh, trapped in a uh, in a eighteen-wheeler that got ditched by the side of the road, and like. Uh, and uh, Texaco or um, uh, Calexico or Paltfaxico. Or Redlands. Come out <laughs> to Redlands. Redlands. No, I'm not going Jeez. to Redlands. So wh- which house was this? I'll go to the Sun. It's my home where I live in Hollywood. Oh, well, I'm 91 not... degrees. Can you believe that, ass? <laughs> no, that's... Uh, yeah. Painful. But you're saving money keeping it at that temperature. All right. All right. I don't need this. We're uh, Dr. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Bruce. Dr. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew, who's in Toronto experiencing a blackout. Let me tell you how bad my work ethic is, Bruce. Uh, I was uh, I was uh, talking to Ann or Lauren or somebody today, and they're like, uh, yeah, uh, Drew uh, is not going to be on tonight. He might not be on because there, there's a blackout. And uh, he was on the set, you know, working on uh, mm. working on the movie. They black out. They'd send everyone home. They never, and I thought, ooh, that lucky son of a gun. <laughs> he got to go home. <laughs> thought, oh, Drew's not happy when that occurs. No, sure. Drew, he he's, he's a busybody, that Drew. Yeah. He's uh, he's over there in Toronto and wants to get something done. He doesn't bring his golf clubs on that trip, I bet. Uh, <laughs> Drew. <laughs> Every time I tell Drew, go, why don't you play some golf and chill out? Golf? Golf? <laughs> Five hours away from my family? That's my family. I couldn't imagine. I'm like, look, that's the whole point, you <laughs> idiot. You're supposed to just walk around on a grass field with your stupid buddies drinking beer for five hours. <laughs> that's the plan of golf. Get away from the goddamn family. I couldn't imagine. No. He's offended by uh, He's offended by golf. <laughs> he's angry at golf. Uh, I mean, Plus, if you ever see a thing where, like, uh, golf carts... Uh, you know, someone cuts the brake lines, and they start cr- going over cliffs, and golf balls start exploding and stuff. That's true. That's true. Rigging them like a bad '70s episode. Uh, Drew's too busy going to the soccer games and yeah, little league games. Yes, I was talking is. to Susan. I got an earful about a month or two ago about what the abuses her kids experienced, their kids experienced at the hands of Me? overly zealous parents. Oh no, the, no, no, she was right on. I mean, you know, the parents that are there that just want to win and the kids aren't having a good time and she, you know her point was I don't want my kids to play have a good time and you know no. not have the give... parents live vicariously through their own loser kids Drew's so. wife's going to give all the kids a eating disorder no nah. she's that Susan's, neurotic Susan's actually does she hit you up she wants money so the kids can go skating <laughs> in Paris <laughs> She does this all the time Drew's wife is nuts by the way Drew's wife is uh, into ice she got Drew's daughters into ice skating, and now it's become their life. They have to follow the kid around the country. Yeah, she's ice great. I mean, it's not like she's out there tripping all over herself and they want to drag her to all Paris right, but her to thing, show off. Her thing is like, his wife comes to me and says, uh, listen, uh, we're trying to get Paulina to Paris this year to do some skating, and we have a group, and what we're doing is we're passing the hand. We're trying to, like, <laughs> are you high? I'm supposed to pay for your daughter to go to Paris so she can skate? I want... 
I've been. I went to Europe six months ago for the first time. I'm 39. And I, for I, a noble I, cause, of course. I, it had I, to do with cars. I, I had to do with cars. I had to pay for myself. Right. What do you mean? I, you, your kid's nine years old. They, they've only been to Paris twice. Well, she's not a Hollywood mom. That's all I'm saying. Oh, please. She's just, she wants her kids not to have a normal. Holiday. Not okay. a hot, a normal. Uh, ice skating on the uh, Champs Elysees? <laughs> Please, <laughs> normal childhood. I hope that Drew defends his wife when he gets back, because I'm way over he my head on this he one. He can't. I, look, Susan was I'm, making a very good point about it. I'm just saying, if you want to take your kid to Paris skating, God bless you. Just pay for it. Yeah. Well, but this is a whole group. Okay, get the group to pay for it. Hmm. Please. She's, she should have used some psychology. She should have said, I want the boys to go over there to do some uh, no, Grand Prix uh, history no, uh, my Here's my problem. Research. My, my problem is I never went. I the furthest I went is Van Nuys from North Hollywood until I was like 33. So yeah. I get angry when I hear about people that are like 14. Why isn't Anderson playing some Europe? of that hillbilly music? <laughs> well, how far? Shut up. <laughs> For 33. Uh, listen, no, Anderson's not there. I don't think. Nicole. Hello. What's up? Hi, this is me. Um. All right, you. <laughs> oh, you. This is us. Huh? This is us. Is it? Okay. Is there a Nintendo game in the background there? Or? That's her yeah. brain when she oh, thinks sorry. too hard. It makes sense. Sounds like a video game. Why well, you put me on hold so long? I don't know. Okay. Um, you sound hot. Huh? Okay. Yeah, You're on hold so really long because I wouldn't say that I'm not. Adam's a therapist in great demand. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So what's up? All right. Let me tell you. All right. I have this big old drama. Is that my sister? <laughs> I'm going to get well worked up about this. You better make it short. Adam's getting bored. That's right. Okay, Go I ahead. Hurry up. I've been for about five months. I'm a really holy person, or I was at least, for this guy. I went to church with him, whatever like that. We broke up for two weeks. I mm. thought maybe my sister was a little not into Jesus, so I brought her to my church to get her more into it. She met this my boyfriend that day, and that day she also got with him. She had, she was flirting she had with him sex with him? him. She had sex with him? Huh? Okay. Uh, I hear something. That was just... Uh, what, what, yeah. like, All right, so what do you want? With her. What do you what, want? What am I to do? What, how do I approach my sister? How old is she? She's 19. How old are you? 18. She's your older sister. How old's your boyfriend? He's 19. You guys are broken up now, right? Obviously, yeah. Does she live out of the house or you guys live together? Um, she moved out. I still live with my father. Okay, so she's out, and she's seeing him? Not anymore. She broke his heart. She okay. got tired of him, so... And is she wanting... Is he wanting to get back together with you? Um, he tells me he loves me and everything like that, but I'm not sure, you know... I don't want to take him back, but, you know... All right, okay. yeah. Yeah, you don't have to take him back. Don't take him back. Don't go near him. He's I bad. It's just like, uh I don't okay, know what let, to say, listen. You know? Okay, I'll tell you what to say. Say, uh, say nothing. But you're, it's, th- it's happened th- more than once. Okay, look. Here's here's the thing. Your your sister's got some energy, and uh, you too have some energy with your sister. And uh, if it's happened more than once, I would try to keep the guys you date. What was that? Sorry, that's my nephew. <laughs> Playing Nintendo. How old is your nephew? He's seventeen. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. This is a bogus. Yeah, call. it seems like it. Does. It does. It's just. It's just. It's just so. It's. Uh, it's so sort of b- bizarre and ambling Plastic. and stuff that it just. Uh, yeah. I mean, okay. All right, Nicole. Look, who cares? We care. Uh, we care, but now nah, it sounds it's very chaotic. It's a bogus call. Cool. All right, that's. <laughs> yeah. This. Listen, everybody. I'm just hearing... please stop calling the show. Okay. Bruce and I could talk. Uh, yeah, let's... Bruce got himself a laser. He takes some tattoos off. Mark yeah. McGrath was in here from uh, Sugar Ray. Ah. Has a, uh, has a tat on his neck. Been hitting it with the laser. Broke it right on up. Not really? You. Not you, but How somebody How dare else. you go to someone else? I don't know. Yo, they did a good job. I'm bringing it to tattoo studios. I've learned never call it a tattoo parlor a year. Oh, really? Oh, my God. Yeah, because, what, there's ice cream parlors and... Uh, uh, yeah, no, Parlor uh, it just reeks of the old days when right. when things were different. But, tattoo studio, right? Yeah, I actually had a booth at the tattoo convention. Now, that was an interesting experience. You Al did. Pomona there, yeah. Brought yeah. the laser down. Yeah. Guys are walking by after a couple of beers going, 
with these guys. You know, great, great breed over guys. there. The tattoo you know they doing taking tattoos off. Yeah. yeah. You, you but I'm trying to. I'm putting. I put a website together, and I'm trying to get lots of good information on the medical issues around piercing and mm-hmm. and all the questions you guys get. All right. You making any money on that uh, tattoo removal? Well, you know, we're going to be in Vegas pretty soon. Yeah. yeah. We're in Orange County. Why don't you leave now for Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> Inkoninkoff.com if you want to uh, yeah. check it yeah, out. Get a plug in. Let me tell you, Bruce. Go- oh, no. No, just, no. Just- no, but seriously, Bruce comes in here. He, he fills in on a moment's notice for Dr. Drew. He doesn't get paid, although he, he consumes $170 worth of sweet and <laughs> loss. So actually, we end up losing money. But uh, you come in here. You do a good job. Give, give a plug. Every, every asshole comes in here, sits in there, plugs the show, plugs the record, plugs the whatever. When, when you shouldn't. Put, put a plug I'm trying in. to plug, plug Drew's in. book, but he doesn't Screw need it. Drew's book. <laughs> he better give me a free copy. All right, give me, uh, give, what's your plug? What, you got a website? Yeah, inkoninkoff.com. If you can't spell it, then don't go to it. I-N-K-O-N-I-N-K-O-F-F.com. Yeah. We're just getting it up, and the idea is to have uh, our mobile laser in various tattoo studios. We're right. In, uh, Outer Limits in Orange County. Right. And, uh... Ink on, Big City Tattoo in San Diego. And ink on, ink off, off, dot com. com. Yeah. And, and, and send me a note, Dr. Bruce. You'll remove bad tats. Well, yeah, or, you know, a lot of it, the, what I find very interesting and fun is lightening tattoos so that they can get... A lot of these guys that are serious about getting tattoos want a different tattoo. And so rather than getting inked over, mm-hmm. you know, getting a, a cover-up, I'll lighten an area or just lighten certain parts of an existing tattoo to change it. It's, it's sort of, uh, you know, different from the... The routine removal of a gang tattoo or right. the cosmetic lasers. Taking stuff. the uh, F, the LAPD oh, off the guy's I, forehead. I've done a couple of those, yeah. It's, it's a community service that I'm proud to perform. He's a good man. Ink on, ink off dot com. Emily? Yeah. You're 14? Yeah. Um, my mom is a former methamphetamine addict, and mm, she just got normal, clean. perfectly healthy. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, um, she just got clean like a few months ago, actually. But um, about a year ago, my little sisters were still allowed to go and have visitations with her. And my mom was in, like, these dumpy motels, and um, it was, like, not a good environment at all. Yeah. But, um, and I guess my mom had, like, a lot of her dealers and her drug addict friends around there. Mm. And, I don't know, and then lately my little sister, like, has no trust for guys at all, and she's mm. nine. And, yeah. like, she freaks out anytime, like, my dad, like, even, like, touches her arm or anything. How old, um, how old is your other sister? Hmm? You say you have a couple sisters? Yeah, I do. Um, one of them is nine and the other one is 11. Hmm. So you're the oldest? Yeah. Any brothers? Um, yeah, I have three. Um, three, br- three brothers? Yeah, two of them are stepbrothers, but, yeah. All right. Uh, how did your mother I'm get... in charge, Mama. Yeah, slug forty four right in the head. Well, how did your mother get off of the state? How did she get off the speed? Did she go to a program? Um, no, she didn't. Up the thing is, she's not completely clean. She hasn't gone to rehab or anything. No. Okay. I I would like to tie her tubes in a sheep shank. Well, you know what? You have some common sense, and you're you have some real strength. Just to be calling and having awareness that you do, you got to call Child Protective Services. You're in California. There's a you know God knows how much money is spent on all the social services here. Utilize how much I spend the taxes each year. Do the math. I don't (laughs) live in Long Beach actually. I'm only here for the summer. My family lives in Seattle. And but my dad and my mom are divorced. Like my dad is remarried, and those are where my two step brothers come from. Where is your younger sister right now? She's in Seattle. Where is your mom? She is She's in Seattle too. Okay, is. so the, is your mom taking care of your sister? No. Okay. Well, who so, is? I mean, is she in a safe place right now? She's yeah, with she, the the dad who's remarried. Yeah, she's. With, and how are you doing, Emily? How are these stepbrothers treating you? Are they all right? Yeah, I love my stepbrothers. We get along Later. really well. All right, be careful. Yeah. <laughs> trust those guys. But, but you're making an observation uh, that's, that's pretty uh, far beyond your years. You, you're seeing something that's... Uh, that's well, she wants to... It, 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 look, quite she needs to get help for the kids. She wants to know what the likelihood is of uh, her younger sister being sexually 100%. abused. 100%. No. It's like 115%, oh. 120 no, we don't know what the likelihood is. Well, we do know that your younger sister was brought up in a bad, 
dangerous and scary environment by a mother who was high and irresponsible and who hung around with other people that were high and irresponsible. And something could have happened, but even if nothing happened, the damage is still done. Not the sexual damage, but the damage of having a mother, a chaotic, high mother. And that alone is grounds for therapy. Now, was there more? Maybe. Well, we don't know. Methamphetamine creates sexual compulsivity. It creates sexual deviancy. And if there's a child around in that environment, it's definitely happened. And it's not, well, it's it's not pretty definitely happened. It's just. There's a possibility that it happened. Well, I'm just saying you have to look at it as, well, assume as the though worst. it has because okay. she needs to see it. This is an emergent situation. We talk about the post-traumatic stress disorder and the bad dreams later on and the troubled relationships. She needs to see somebody who's an expert that can sort it out. Okay. So she needs to talk to her dad. Yes. Well, That's right. right. Emily. Yeah, she needs to talk to her father. Make him aware that she's talked to two experts here on the, on the radio <laughs> and that yeah. we've, we've emphasized this is an emergent situation. It really is. Okay. Dad needs to get her to somebody yeah. that knows how to deal with these yeah. kind of family you wonder, issues. You wonder about Dad, who married the uh, speed freak in the first place. Well, so if there's any issues with him, then Emily needs to call. They have a Child Protective Services. They are there not to prosecute anybody, but to check things out. It's just like as a physician, if I'm in the emergency room or in my practice, if I suspect anything, I'm mandated to do it, to call. Okay. And then they check anything things out. Anything looks suspicious. Right. And right. it's... Uh, it's not. It's an anonymous thing, also. So Emily can call, explain the situation anonymously, and right. you just ask for any any social service agency with a city or county that uh, you live in up there. Good times. Good times. Great. <sighs> All right. Uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, 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 no, I, I was saying. Uh, if you're thinking it, it must be brilliant. I know. No. Nah. No. Nah, nah. You, you want to share it with the, I, with the listeners? I was. Uh, I was just, you know, you know, I like to always harp about uh, the uh, millions of dollars in taxes I pay and how I get zero for in return. Like Ariana Huffington, she, that bitch. She paid no federal state, seven hundred dollars a state. I know, it's great. But she hates loopholes for the rich. <laughs> yeah, she she hates loopholes for the rich. And she lives in an eight million dollar house that says six thousand square feet. She paid seven hundred bucks in taxes uh, last year. Of course, it's of course. Abuse. Yeah, like she's fooling me with that crappy Zsa Zsa Gabor <laughs> accent of hers. I like Arnold. She's accent. full of crap. But anyway, here's here's the point. Uh, pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes uh, every year. I never got a goddamn thing. I don't have any kids in school. I've never been to a library. I can't get anything. And uh, if I want an extra trash can, it's an extra 20 bucks, just like uh, if I was on welfare, which I don't like, by the way. But anyway, the other day I thought I had an opportunity to do something because I was going to install a solar system in my house. And they said, you know, Southern California Edison will pay like uh, 50 or 60 percent of the cost of getting the thing hooked up. Hmm. Because, uh, yeah, sure, they want people, they want to encourage people to uh, do it. You see what's going on over there in New York and Canada. You get a good solar system, your meter is spinning backwards the whole day when you're not home. I swear to God, you're putting power back onto the grid. It's really? crazy. Yeah. But no credit. You don't get any money for that, of course. Well, they they, they credit you with your your actual meters actually It's like going, rollover going, minutes on the phone. You're... you're now, would you shut up? Your meter is going backwards, so you're getting you're going down negative. So then, when you come home and you kick on the air conditioner, now it's mm-hmm. going positive. It's going the other way, but you've 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 amassed mileage going the opposite direction. So it's, it's like rollover minutes. You on catch a open, you catch up to. <laughs> All right, I I, I know. It, no, it's not because it's, it's you're 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 getting credit for something that. Okay, but, I understand. Yeah. All right, just, just quiet with those rollover minutes. <laughs> anyway, the point is... So what's the problem with that? You're going to do Nothing. It? it was great. Yes, finally I'm going to get something from this uh, goddamn city of ours, and uh, they discontinued the program. That's the good news. Huh. That's the good news. Yeah. All right. So there, there's one thing I qualified for. I mean, there's one goddamn thing where I could have had an opportunity, and I was remember I was like, you mean they'll pay for half of the uh, installation? And then, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. except for uh, they got rid of the program. They got overburned. All right, so okay. great. So good. I've kept my streak alive of doing nothing but paying and getting zero. Uh, That's all I'm saying. I'm on a roll. I'm on a crap roll. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Ready? Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Bruce. Look at Dr. Bruce all comfortable. His legs up in the studio. Relaxing. It's tough because we're sitting on stools and they have wheels on them. 
feet. And you want to put your feet up and relax, but you, you keep rolling, rolling, around. rolling around the studio. <laughs> your feet start getting further <laughs> away from you, and then you start stretching out. And eventually, you have to lie out like a piece of wood, yeah, like a plank over over the two stools. Yeah, I'm hyperactive enough, so I start finding myself in different parts of the studio. Here. Shocking that a guy would drink 30 cups of coffee with 70 teaspoons of sugar, and it would be hyperactive. No, you know what? Caffeine sort of calms me down. I, I, oh, really? I have a cup of coffee, I fall asleep because oh, really? I was diagnosed with ADHD, which, you know, whether that's... Okay. Uh-huh. I think I'm perfectly normal. Actually. So it's like Ritalin is speed, and they give it to kids that are hyperactive, but it ends up slowing them down. Or Adderall, which is amphetamine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They put me on that for a while. but They did? Don't listen to them, Bruce. You're no, perfect. it did. I mean, the first time that they gave me Ritalin, I actually almost uh, drove kid? off the... No, no, actually, as an adult. This last month. <laughs> Drew doesn't believe that diagnosis, so I'm like, well, maybe. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, sort of... You're, you're good people. I'm taking you're therapeutic fine. caffeine now. That's it. Smart. All right. Dr. Uh, Drew is uh, back in Toronto. <laughs> in a blackout. In a blackout. <laughs> Sounds bad. But... <laughs> I hope his apartment burns down from a <gasps> candle falling over. Oh. He's probably on top of both the Olsen twins right now. Oh. Because it's lawless over there. First off, you can't be prosecuted in Canada. Canada is lawless. Moose running up and down the street. <laughs> I guys room, drinking that high I went to beer. college in Michigan. I, I room with Canadians, and I swear to Lawless. God, Americans would ask them, "Did they? Do you have to take a dog sled at the border?" <laughs> it's, front, it's new front. It's like the old west over there. Nah. Yeah, no. That's law. Western Canada. Lawless, nah. lawless. There's no, there's, there's no such thing as rape over there. Drew's probably with both, both the Olsen twins. How old right are those twins? How old dare enough? You? Old enough. Yeah. Old enough for Drew. Yeah, right. Now they're seventeen in a month. <sighs> seventeen in one month. Drew's but probably Drew, Drew works combined age. Yeah. That's how he. That's no, how he he's, sleeps. He's work. He's probably giving him good advice and yeah. making sure that their uh, their sure. boundaries are healthy. Here's his good advice: uh, more lube. <laughs> <laughs> I've had anal sex and I passed out. A couple right, times. Uh, Anderson's here. Please. Anderson's somewhere. And hey, what's up, guys? Hey, you're 20. What's up? Yeah, um, I, me and my girlfriend. We've been uh, we've been together for two months, and uh, she's not on birth control. But uh, I use condoms, and I use the spermicidal lubricated condoms. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was wondering what else I could do to, like, prevent, you know, pregnancy since she's not on the pill. You realize this is uh, fertile material for Adam's comedic skills? No, it question. isn't. Oh, okay. Why? I, I don't know. I thought you'd have some something very rude to say. Good time. Yeah, good time. Okay. Well, I, she's got to get on the pill. Yeah, I mean, I, like... Why is she refusing that? I, I really don't know. I mean, I've brought it up a few times, but, I mean, her answer is always like, oh, I just never got around to it, or, uh, you know, some, some stupid half-assed, you know, thing like that. All right, well, if she's really interested in not getting pregnant, then uh, the pill is yeah, the way start, to go. I'm starting to scare her a little bit more with it, you know, like telling yeah. her, man, you can get pregnant, you know. Yeah, well, well, what if you just went to family planning together? Yeah, there's, 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 you there's, talk. there's patches, right? you know, there's shots. But just go into a family planning place, have a discussion with her. Just tell her you want to discuss the options. And the, the spermicide stuff's no good. Now, maybe she wants to get pregnant. Maybe there's some underlying, some other agenda maybe she has. She, maybe she's a little freaked out about it. She's never done it before. There's all sorts of stories. Yeah, maybe she smokes and she's afraid of getting a blood clot or there's cancer in the family and she still thinks she can get... Here's whatever. the thing. The pill is... Being on the pill is better than being off the pill, pretty much, from what I've uh, gathered if you're a younger, non-smoking woman. Regulates periods. Right. So go to a family planning place with her. Lisa? Yeah, what's going on? You're 23? Yeah. yeah. Uh, my question is, is I'm wondering if I should stay in the relationship that I'm in because I'm kind of starting to, like, doubt my gut feeling. Um, I've been with my boyfriend for about three and a half years, and we just moved in together about two months ago. And uh problem started about two weeks ago. He was saying how he's kind of unhappy with like the lack of sex and so that started a fight and then you know the next day he starts talking to a girl on the phone in our house like right in front of me so we get into a big fight and i ask him what's going on and uh that night he doesn't come home till about four in the morning and he works till midnight so i called his work and asked you know if he left and they said yeah so then when he came home he said he worked late and i didn't believe him so we've been fighting all week and then just the other day you know i asked him you know to be honest i felt he was lying and he said yeah that he went out with some friends, and I said, well, you, were you with the girl you were talking on the phone to? And he said he was. Mm. So I'm kind of wondering if I'm being, you know, a fool here, if I'm kind of being played or... All right. Uh, you guys have any kids? No. All right. That's good. That's great. <laughs> Why are you still there? Yeah. It just... How long have you been going out with him? Three and a half years. All right. This thing's coasting to an end. Well, I mean, the guy just cheated on you. Probably. He, he, he swears up and down that nothing happened and that... 
he's just unhappy with us and he wants to be able to go out when he wants. And I said, All well, right, well can. Why, why, why is he complaining that uh, you guys aren't having enough sex? Um, I don't know. It just I don't have as high of a sex drive as he does. I mean, he wants it like every day, three times a day. <laughs> right. And I'm, right. you know, I'm not down with that. What what is you, that? How often do you guys have sex? Uh, it varies. Lately, for the past two weeks, we haven't because of all this. <laughs> no, but yeah. When but you first general, year you went out, was it three times a day? Oh, it was a lot when we first went out, yeah. Yeah, it's always <laughs> but a lot. But that was three and a half years ago. Okay, listen, Lisa. Uh, I don't know if the guy cheated or not. It seems like uh, he was just trying to uh, get under your skin, talking to her in front of you and doing that kind of stuff. If you're if you're really in love with the guy, you guys need to uh, you know sort of have a, a, an adult, mature conversation. See if you can settle your differences and move forward. Uh, but it also sounds like people do this all the time. They get in these relationships at 18 or 19, three, four years goes by. They're different people. It's the only relation, real relationship they've had. And then they end up getting married. They get divorced uh, six months later. I think you need to break up when you've had a relationship. You, you met when you are 18 and a half. You're 23 now. It's time to break up. God is speaking to you through Adam Carolla. Break it up. If, there were no kids, right? No kids. Yeah, so you're no blessed. Kids. I mean, you get it. And some guys, this is their way. Of, they're, they're not going to leave on their own. This is their way. They're, they're giving you the scenario. Yeah. They're giving you the picture. Listen, they want you to w leave. You're, you're still, the boat is has not left the dock. You can step off on the dry land. But once you have that kid, once you right. get married, you're out at sea now. And if you think you're getting to shore, you're going to drown. Right. Thank you. We'll be right back. the show i want to thank uh it's the end of the week so i want to thank a lot of people i want to thank uh junior 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 producer lauren for doing a great job coming through today in a pinch and she brought you Gourmet coffee tonight. Bring gourmet coffee. Yeah. Getting, appreciate uh, it. Getting uh, Dr. Bruce out here. I want to thank Dr. Bruce for doing a fantabulous job. I want to thank uh, Engineer Ken. Yeah, for doing a great job uh, all week uh, long. And uh, I want to thank uh, for phone screener Brian and uh, phone screener Tara. Don't call me Tara, God damn it. And uh, Engineer Michelle out here running the board out at the, the fabulous K-Rock. And uh, again, so four. Dr. Bruce, this is Adam Carolla saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.